Alright, what is up guys, it is Storm back here with another video, and in this one I am bringing you part 29 to Midas and My Hero Academia's story by the Mysterious Banana. Now, if you want to check this story out for yourself, the link to it will be down in the description below. But before the video begins, if you like the content you're seeing, then be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. I mean, they're all free, so why not? If you want some dope channel merch, link to that will be down in the description below. And if you want to see more of me, be sure to go check out my other channels, and go follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, which will all be linked down below. But, without further ado, why don't we just dive right on in. After the battle against All Might was settled, both Izuku and Katsuki were brought to the temporary infirmary where Chio, a recovery girl, scolded All Might for going too hard against the two students. He couldn't blame her, he really went overboard this time around. According to the nurse, in fact, he had hit Izuku so hard he would have been paralyzed from the waist down had he gone even a .001% higher with one for all. With this quirk brought into subjects, All Might suddenly remembered about his successor, Todoroki, and asked the nurse about him. Apparently, Shoto was successfully able to use 40% of his quirk, with the only backlash being a light concussion. Hearing this, he had never felt prouder, knowing that his disciple was making much faster progress than he did back in his training days. Although, he did have endeavors to thank for hardening him up. While All Might was going to bring the two back to the school beds, however, Kotsky was still conscious and got up, slapping All Might's hand out of the way and left the tent. I don't need to be carried, he groaned, as he left with an annoyed tone. However, as he left the tent, he heard the sound of the multiple exit gates opening as, one after another, the students had completed their exams themselves. While some hugged and thanked each other, others ran to check on those who made it before them. There was only one catch. No one was going to look for him, even though some claimed they were going to check on Izuku. Just then, Ochako and Ida, followed by a few other students, ran towards him. Just when Katsuki was going to say something, however, the students ran right past him, like he wasn't even there. We nearly got first. I nearly got first. I blasted All Might in his face, so... So why? Why won't any of them acknowledge my strength? Thought Kotsky. These... These fuckers don't even know what they're missing. They can't recognize raw talent unlike to... Just then, Kotsky's thoughts slammed to a halt. Deku. Why would that name pop back into his head like that? Looking around the facility, he saw a park bench. Extremely similar to the one where he had beat up two fourth graders back in second grade. He was beaten up and bruised, and yet, who came to congratulate and admire him? Izuku. Ever since that day, he knew since his first day in kindergarten was gone, things went silent. Scary silent. No one else cared about how great he was. They just walked past him no matter how loud he gets. Izuku was the only voice he had left to break that silence, and yet, it was gone too. Damn that shitty nerd, Kotsky sweared, kicking an empty can as he walked off. Maniacal laughs resonated through the walls of an abandoned warehouse. The puppeteer of the League of Villains, all for one laughed in joy and pride, seeing his disciple overcome his weakness with such ease. <laughs> you really are the gift that keeps on giving, aren't you, my boy? I didn't expect you to jump that hurdle this soon, all for one cheered, looking at his pruny palm. Perhaps you really are ready to inherit my quirk. Upon saying that, the villain started to cough violently. He placed his palm over his mouth, and when he removed it, there was blood. Looks like I don't have much time left. I better hurry up and carry out this plan. Later that day, Izuku came back to the bar, once again, greeted by everyone in the bar. Seeing most of his members there, he smiled, knowing that at the end of the day, there will always be people back home, his real home, to help him recharge his batteries after an exhausting day, especially Toga, who, as usual, leapt into Izuku like a dog when their owner comes home from work. The door to the basement slammed open as Irina, Yang, and Sachi, all dripping with sweat, came out with some light bruises here and there. Ah, Izu bro, you're back, Sachi said in his usual cheerful tone. Oh, hey Sachi, what's with the bruises? asked Izuku. Oh, you know, just the aftermath of me sparring with Rina and Kim, replied the man, sitting down at the counter and ordering some ale and offering one to him. So, how did the whole back to being quirkless gimmick work out for you? Izuku smiled at the question. It went great. I feel a huge burden has finally dropped. 
Trust me, your cunning leader has returned, he replied. Alright then, so-called cunning leader. Now that your bitching phase is out of the way, how about we go catch that Shigaraki bastard again? Asked Irina. Nah, leave him, replied Izuku nonchalantly. The room went silent. Leave him, asked Toka, but, but he'll blow your cover. Yeah, and the rest of the leagues as well, replied Spinner. Then let him have it, Izuku explained. My infiltration of UA has served its purpose. I've noted all the quirks of all the students and teachers. I've leaked their school plans, their personal identities, everything. There is absolutely no reason for me to stay. But why did you then? asked Dobby. Because of my drive for revenge. Even originally, my plan was to infiltrate UA and was just to teach Kachan a lesson. Aside from that, there's no reason I should have stayed in UA. Back then, when I suggested the infiltration, I only used the info leaks as an excuse to enter UA. My real intentions were for my own. Selfish ends. That's why Sensei took away my quirk, so that I could overcome my weaknesses. Now, I'm no longer held back by my past grudges. I'm stronger now. And the stronger me suggests, since I'm gonna be revealed sooner or later, I might as well reveal myself with a bang. What do you mean? asked Yang, aka Kim. Izuku smiled. We're going to assault them at the training camp happening this summer. We'll kidnap a few of them and leave the pro heroes alive to suffer humiliation from the public. The heroes who can't protect their students. UA. A death trap for your children. The heroes failed. I can still think up more names for the newspaper headlines following this event. Explain their new and improved boss. Kidnap. Why not kill? asked Muscular. Kill a few if you want, but these students have more than one use. Once we kidnap them, Shigaraki will probably reveal the location of our current base. Or perhaps they'll manage to track us down, which we must make sure happens through any means necessary. With the hostage from Yue in hand, they will surely send their best to stop us at our current base, explained Izuku. You want us to take on the best years of Japan now? asked Magni in confusion. Izuku smiled as a black portal opened. We won't. The league gasped as Kurogiri jumped out, following a giant goliath of a nomu. He will. What is that thing? asked Yong. This, my friend, is what you get when you combine Sensei's ingenuity with my father's chemistry. Is this nomu really strong enough to beat the heroes? asked Toga. No, Izuku replied. It's just a distraction. The main attraction lies in one of its quirks. Demonstration, please. Suddenly, a transparent blue dome appeared around the Nomu, surrounding part of the counter. Sachi tapped the inner wall. It was solid. His quirk containment creates a force field that can expand up to 1,500 cubic meters. While the field does have limits to how much punishment it can take, it will suffice for phase two. Izuku continued as following the white Nomu came a group of smaller Nomus. These little creatures are filled with explosives. Once the containment field is up, these babies come in and blow up every last hero that was caught in the trap. That's genius. That's dumb. Twice finished. And in the meantime, we regroup in a separate warehouse, one Shigaraki would never know about, and watch the fireworks. Most of the league agreed with the plan, besides Kurogiri, who was actually against the plan, seeing how it would mean abandoning the bar they always spend their time in. What about our next base? asked Kurogiri, trying to convince him otherwise. Sensei's got that part covered, and speaking of Sensei, I just remembered, he called me a few hours ago. He claimed it was about something important, said the young leader. Kurogiri, would you do the honors? Though skeptical, the bartender knew he could trust All for One. Opening a black portal, Izuku was warped into All for One's warehouse, right in front of his sensei. You have done well, Izuku, said All for One. Not even I expected you to overcome your weakness so quickly. Thank you, sensei, but on a different topic. Why have you called me here? Izuku asked. Hearing this, the wise mentor smiled as he decided to start from the beginning. Another black portal appeared as Izuku was warped back to the bar. So, how'd the meeting go? asked Toga. Izuku looked down at his hand, sizzling with dark energy. Wonderful. The next day, back at UA, the class cheered and congratulated each other for passing the tests. Most of the students were actually flocking near Izuku since he was able to pass with flying colors despite being pitted against the number one pro hero. Even though he had a handicap with weights tied to each of his limbs, it was still an impressive feat he had done. 
Yeah, thanks guys, uh, you all did great too. Izuku said uncomfortably, trying to come up with replies to all the praise he was getting. Suddenly, he felt the strong aura of depression behind him, as if part of the room was covered by Tokuyami's quirk. Looking behind him, he found the students who didn't make the cuts. Mina, Kaminari, Sato, and Kirishima all flopped over like someone stole their backbone. Whoa there, talk about a great depression, what's up with them? Izuku asked. They failed the practical, I heard, responded Ochako. God, I feel terrible for them. Everyone, I'm looking forward to uh, a bunch of awesome stories from the trip, Mina cried. Now hold on, there could be a twist somewhere, maybe we'll all be going, Hida responded, trying to calm his fellow classmates. Yeah, right, failing our written exams means summer school hell for us. Plus, we flunked the practical. The only choice would be if your average score was less than a monkey's, yelled Kaminari, pointing Izuku in the eye in the process. Calm down, you're talking too much, Sarah cut in, pointing at a smug Mineta. I only pass thanks to Mineta, so I'm probably in the same boat as you guys. The door slammed open suddenly as Aizawa came in, as usual, right as the bell rang. That's the bell. Please be seated, he ordered, as the class obediently went silent and sat down. Good morning. Now, about your finals. We had some unfortunate failure, as such. The teacher stated as the four students who were addressed felt more humiliated than ever. You're all going to the training camp. What a twist, yelled the failures after hearing the announcement. Hell yeah, kiss my ass, summer school, cheered Kaminari. However, Aizawa cut in freezing the four. Failures are still failures. Kaminari, Mina, Sato, Kirishima, and Saro, you five have failed the practical and hence will receive extra supplemental lessons. And trust me, you will wish afterwards that you had summer school instead. Hearing this, the once cheerful students returned to their slumped over depressed selves. Only this time, they had an extra member joining in. So, clearing the practical doesn't guarantee a pass, Sarah mumbled. Now also with a black cloud of shame looming over him. Welcome to the club, buddy, grunted Kirishima. Wow, we have a lot to pack for a one-week trip, commented Ida while reading through the list. Yeah, no kidding, and look at the, some of the things we need. Night vision goggles, hiking gear, scuba suits. I don't even own half the stuff on this list, commented Oshako. I know, since we have a day off tomorrow and the tests are over, how about we go shopping, asked Toru. Most of the class agreed on the idea, besides Katsuki and Todoroki, both with their own reasons. Izuku turned to Ochako, who seemed very enthusiastic about the idea. Are you sure you can afford all this stuff? I heard your family was economically struggling. Especially since they're going through trial and all, asked Isuku, as some of the students agreed with that. Don't worry, Ochako replied with a smile. A very kind man donated to us the necessary amount of money we needed to get a lawyer and win the lawsuit. My family has never felt better. Hearing this, he recalled what Sachi said to him a few weeks prior. The money. I gave my share to someone who needed it more than me. Money well spent, in my opinion. You're a kind man at heart, Sachi. I appreciate that, thought Izuku. The next day, the group met up at the Kiyashi Ward shopping mall right off the bat. Ida started planning things to buy, dashing off with Shoji since he could carry more things thanks to his six arms. Momo and Jiro went to buy a duffel bag, while Kaminari, Toru, and Mina went to buy shoes. Mineta claimed he was looking for... lotion, but headed clearly in the wrong direction, passing by the Victoria's Secret for obvious reasons leaving Izuku and Ochako alone. So, what do you need, Uraraka? I already have my things ready, asked Izuku. Oh, me, I need, um, bug spray, Ochako said, when Aoyama suddenly popped into her head. You like him, don't you? She remembered him saying during their practical, causing her to blush. Without even any warning, she just took off, leaving Izuku behind. A huge drop of sweat slid down the back of Izuku's head. What was that about? Suddenly, an uncanny presence was felt from behind him as a man, dressed in a black hoodie despite the weather, came from behind the young students. Feeling that familiar aura of malice and atrocity, the smiling mask of innocence Izuku puts on every day at UA had dropped, revealing a far more dastardly, brutal, yet formal figure reminiscent of Mafia, or in this case, Yakuza bosses. Well, this is quite unexpected of you. I never thought you were much of a shopper, Shigaraki, he said in a quiet and sarcastic tone, turning around to face him. So, you did notice me, Shane, and I wanted to grab you by the throat so badly, replied his former superior. And then what? Kill me in the middle of all these people? 
in a town filled with pro heroes. You're pretty reckless, Shigaraki. I guess that's why we, well, I kicked you out. Well, Shigaraki normally would have lunged at him for insulting him like that. He strangely maintained his composure. You're no better. Failing to capture me twice, having your own men turn on you and then throwing a tantrum over it? I know every last move you've made thus far, Mightless. And I dare say it, you really are the pot who calls the kettle black. Isuku smiled at his comment in comparison, almost taking it like witty banter. He then slowly walked towards his would-be attacker, passing by him. I'm sure you're here to do more than just insult me for my past failures. And I surely hope you didn't plan to fight me. So whatever you're planning to say, save it for later. I prefer discussing things sitting down over a cup of margarita, or tea in this case, rather than standing in the middle of the crowd, wouldn't you agree? Sounds good, Shigaraki replied after letting out an annoyed groan. The two headed to a nearby cafe, both ordering coffee, with Shigaraki's being extra black, almost like ink. Alright, now, you were saying? Isuku asked, slowly sipping his cup of cappuccino. His chat partner downed his cup in a gulp, practically ignoring how hot it was. You know, you put me through a lot, and even though I would love to kill you where you stand, I was recently made aware that you now have all for one in your possession, so that plan's out the window. Rather, I came to make a deal, Shigaraki said, smiling maniacally almost as if he had a plan, which made the current head of the league uncomfortable. A deal? Yes, you see my quirk is fully capable of bypassing any and all of UA's current security, I can enter your school anytime, anywhere, to deliver hard evidence of your real identity. I can end your infiltration mission with a snap of my finger. So here's what I suggest. Of course, I'm asking for your AFO quirk. Rather, I would simply like you to re-include me into the league, and I won't leak out anything. Of course, that is until I backstab you during one of his missions and have you imprisoned, thought Shigaraki in his head, trying to hold back his chuckle. However, Izuku gave him the last answer he expected. No thanks, leak my info if you want, replied the boy as he finished his cup. Anger drew in Shigaraki's eyes. What? You heard me? No deal, Izuku replied again, this time getting up while putting two 500 yen bills on the table. Oh, and the coffee's on me, you're welcome. As he got up, however, Shigaraki's entire body trembled with rage. So you really don't care about your info getting leaked, do you? asked Shigaraki, but to no response. Answer me. Izuku turned around, now seeing a side he is far more familiar with. So there's the Shigaraki I know. Izuku clapped, as expected from Sensei's greatest failure. Having heard that, Shigaraki finally snapped, lunging at him, grabbing him by the neck, leaving only one finger off to make sure he doesn't die too quickly. You shouldn't have said that, you fuck. I'll kill you, he growled, which just proves my point. You never got over your weaknesses, only denied them. Have you ever admitted that you were the reasons of your failures? No, not even when you sabotaged our assassination attempt on Aizawa, Izuku grunted, trying to hold him back. Shut up, shut up, shut up, yelled Shigaraki, as some of the nearby crowd screamed in fear. You are stuck on All Might, your mind set on a linear path to kill him. You never grew out of it. Like a teen who never grew out of his diapers. The fact that you led such a league for so long astounds me. But that's all thanks to Sensei, isn't it? You're nothing without him. Nothing. Izuku kept on scolding, despite Shigaraki's grip tightening. You just can't accept that you're still weak. Just as Shigaraki was about to use his fifth finger to disintegrate Izuku while he was going to use all for one to steal his quirk, a needle flew into Shigaraki's elbow and the stinging pain caused Shigaraki to let go. Get off my boss, Shigarak cunt, scoffed a familiar figure. The villain turned around, meeting face to face with the familiar red beanie. You. The shooter glared at him back as the villain backed off from the two. Leave, he threatened. Seeing how he was outclassed, despite clearly being able to beat the guy one on one, he knew once Izuku recovered, he stood no chance. Suddenly, what Izuku said it came back to mind. You just can't accept the fact that you're still weak, and as much as he hated to admit it, he was starting to see what he meant and for once in his life. He thought before acting. He realized that even if he killed both of them, he would still have to deal with the heroes, and AFO would be lost forever. Fine, he grunted. You win this time. I'll just have to sabotage your next mission, he thought, leaving. With the encounter with Shigaraki ended, Izuku stood back, rubbing his throat. 
and turned to Sachi. Thanks for the help, Sachi. Izuku thanked. No need to thank me, boss. I'm just doing my thing, Sachi replied confidently. Izuku, a third female voice was heard, cutting into their conversation. Who's that you're with? The two turned around, coming face to face with Ochako. The girl looked at his friend, who gave a familiar vibe to her. Wait, I know you. you. You're that guy who donated me all that money, Ochako said with a smile. Izuku, do you know this guy? Seeing her, Sachi turned to his boss. Yo, boss, are you by chance cheat on your girl? You know she'll probably stab both of you if she found out, right? Sachi whispered to him. She's just a friend, now play it cool, Izuku whispered back. Oh, uh, uh, hi, I should, uh, should probably introduce myself first. Sorry for not doing that at the sports festival. My name is Sachiko Sukuyama, a 19-year-old traveler from Kyoto. Me and Izuku were actually, uh, uh, distant cousins. Yar? Izuku mumbled, only to receive an elbow to the side. Yes, very, very distant. Hearing this, Ochako smiled. Well, a friend of Izuku's is a friend of mine. Come on, let me show you around, Ochako said, grabbing Sachi by the wrist. No, that won't be necessary, Sachi said, before getting dragged off. Izuku just watched as his colleague was dragged off, dumbfounded, wondering how he ended up in the league in the first place. I did it.